Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Judicious Fire, and I am here with the most essential heroes in Castle Clash. We're looking at it from a free-to-play perspective. The heroes on this list, and those that I'll describe in terms of their setups and talents, are all available through standard gem rolling. They're all heroes that have been tested and proven over the years of Castle Clash. They're heroes you're not you're going to regret upgrading later. Free-to-play has got to maximize resource use and prioritize hero upgrading. You don't want to make a mistake. Uh, this list is going to be generated from the compendium that is in the uh, blue tab, pink and yellow book. Something we all have equal access to, all able to reference later. Uh, if you could hit the subscribe button and the not notification bell, I'll let you know when these videos come out. I'm going to go right now to the compendium. I'm going to make a list, a uh, list of heroes. We're going to go over each one. I'm going to tr try to do so as quickly as pos possible for uh, running length. Uh, if you want a deeper or more detailed version of each of these heroes, uh, I have, because they're essential heroes, I have most of these um, heroes done on an individual video basis somewhere in the video list uh, that I've got here on the channel. Uh, we are going to start with a list of 19. The most number of heroes, the highest number of heroes that we use in this game at any given time, all game modes, would be 18. That's Fortress Feud. That is the rarity where we're using that many at a time. Typically it's five or six, but you can go up to 18. I'm making a list of 19 because I'm adding Pumpkin Duke. He's not somebody I would put on my Fortress Feud team or necessarily my Lost Battlefield team, but he is an absolutely core and essential hero. So let's get started with him. Uh, this uh, Pumpkin Duke uh, hero is going to do a lot. He is going to buff your team. That is absolutely essential. You get huge bonuses. You need that. Uh, typically, as far as his talents are concerned, uh, we are running in the same tab. Now, talent. Uh, we are running uh, on Pumpkin Duke. I'd say currently probably regen is going to be his uh, best in terms of um, energy production. Uh, a Empower is going to be you know, equally as good, especially if you're using him for a dungeons. Uh, you can run one or the other as a um, Insignia. Uh, don't be afraid of damage reduction on the guy in Insignia form. Something like a Sacred Light or a Stone Skin Insignia really at any level, is going to help to keep this guy alive. And you can swap it in and out with other things as you need it. A, uh, a life drain, an insignia form, really regen and empower as the talent. Uh, a flame guard, uh, something like a revite, instant skill activation, you've got to revive, bring him back if he dies, and he is prone to death. So don't worry about trying to give him some damage reduction or a little bit of revive because uh, a dead PD helps nobody. Uh, let's jump on to our list of 18. That was our bonus. Uh, we are going to take a long walk through a number of heroes. And that is a sad part of Castle Clash, but each of those heroes have only niche uses, really. Um, we are going to jump into Tree Antar. Okay, Tree is one of about uh, three current revivers in Castle Clash. You can bring your guys back from the dead. But nobody in this game can bring your whole team back. Simultaneously, boom, your whole team's right back. Uh, others take a while to do it. Uh, I would prioritize Tree Antar. And he's somebody, until that is, is changed, uh, and a hero takes his place, we're going to use Tree Antar to bring our whole team back. So I would go with this guy. I would go with something with the damage reduction. Uh, you want to keep him alive. I think one of the best things for Tree uh, in talent form is a revive. He brings others back from the dead. Let him have that same ability. So in case he dies, he can still perform his job. Uh, instant skill activation with a revite. Uh, I think something like stone skin, sacred light, uh, even a tenacity. Something that's going to help to keep him alive. Um, you can use a, an Empower for an auto-proc effect on your base, but he's not going to revive 
people. He's just going to give a damage reduction to those uh, heroes that are around him. I think Sacred Light is one of his core talents. Uh, and I think that... Um, I think that would be about it. He is a defense-oriented hero, and I would take a look at him from that perspective. Taking another long walk. This is the thing about Castle Clash. We put out certain heroes, and others become uh, obsolete. They do that hero's job. Well, nobody can do Michael's job. That's why he's one of those essential heroes. He does sort of what Pumpkin Duke does, and not quite as well in terms of numbers, but he has a tremendous survivability. He is a hero that you can actually use in battle. It's like Pumpkin Duke was that bonus because I wouldn't put him in that kind of a battle. Mike, Mike can do that. Uh, and he can kill off heroes and he can make it through those long, long uh, base defenses. Uh, I would uh, run him probably with something like a, um, he is a deflector of damage, yes, but I personally feel as though his life and staying alive is more important. He's not going to deflect anything if he's dead. I would give him some kind of damage reduction, like a sacred light is wonderful. Um, there's some seconds when his skill isn't activating where his uh, deflect is down and it leaves him very vulnerable. Some run a flame guard on him. Uh, I think empower for the auto proc. He'll buff your whole team and make them stronger, multiple times stronger. They'll go into beast mode, and he can do that automatically again and again with empower. Uh, I think a revite, something like arena, lost battlefield, boom, whole team flies ahead and starts hero killing. Uh, revive, all of these I think would be better in insignia form because you can swap them in and out. Uh, you see, I'm mentioning many because there are many that can be run on somebody like a Michael. Uh, you can even do something like a Vigorous Fury if you want to make him more of a hero killer. A bulwark, uh, extra health, uh, tenacity. Uh, so a lot of things to do with this guy's health because it's very, very high to begin with. Anubis. Anubis is a hero that's going to just nuke, devastate up to 100 heroes at a time. Uh, one of the absolute most essential and core dungeon heroes and when it comes to dungeon progress in this game there are dungeons where he's going to take care of half the the trouble on the board the moment he activates his skill so i would try to work a little bit of damage and a little bit of damage reduction into the guy he's not squishy at all he's got three you know lives uh, as backup but uh, he is not somebody who you want to necessarily put out there by himself. He needs a team. Uh, I think some of his best talents would be something like a, uh, if you have a high dodge on him, a blade dance can be okay. Uh, if you want to give him some uh, invulnerability as well as some uh, healing, which is something he lacks, survival is really good. Uh, maybe some sacred light it wouldn't be my first choice i'd probably run it as an insignia as far as uh base talents are concerned i would maybe probably go with something like a a flame guard uh, it's great for deflecting damage as well as reducing the damage he takes you put that up there with an, an empower he's an auto proc hero he will lower the attack ability of the enemy the moment they attack your base and it'll hit him with damage that can one-shot some heroes in this game. Uh, and power is a wonderful ability, has that wonderful ability to really defend your base well on auto proc heroes. Uh, something like a tenacity, get his health up. A stone skin, a stone skin Anubis, he would be a tank. Uh, You could get instant skill activation. I haven't really found, uh, with, the, with the Revite, I haven't really found too much of a energy production problem with him. I think he would be better with a talent that lasts a little bit longer. Uh, and you want to stay away from Revive. He has built-in Revives, and they would cancel out the Revive talent or Insignia. Uh, let's move on to our next hero, Ronin. Ronin is going to become invisible. And he can't take damage during that time, not in any conventional way. 
uh, many people are able to create a ronin that is able to do the majority of the base damage, like 75%, up to 100%, and actually solo a base in a Guild Wars or a raid simply with Ronin. Uh, Ronin is a hero that I would kind of look at trying to keep him alive and let his uh, elusive, his stealth, let that uh, really be his primary focus. Uh, if you can put dodge on him as a trait, I think it can be a wonderful thing to go along with his ability to be elusive and to stay out of danger. Uh, as far as talents go, um, Blade Dance, maybe, if you've got really high dodge. Uh, Blade Dance really does pair well with high dodge heroes. And you have to get it up to like a certain number, a couple thousand, before it really starts to uh, have a dramatic impact. Uh, stealth, I would probably stay away from because it, while it does do the same thing as Ronin, uh, his health has to be very, very low for it to activate. And he tends to get killed right away once he comes up out of that stealth. Uh, you can help to prevent that with something like a uh, survival, which does grant invulnerability and healing. Uh, you can give him a variety of damage dealing talents that have to do with critical like the Vigorous Fury, as well as Brute Force. He does critical very, very well. Uh, does that actually naturally. Um, I think a life drain on him for his attack speed. Uh, I think it could be very good in a variety of game modes. Uh, you could do even a scatter if you're using him uh, in like boss battles or uh, you know against certain Labyrinth Goblins or you're using him just in any way to reduce the energy of the enemy. Uh, he doesn't necessarily need a, a, a revite because he enters into that stealth mode the moment you use him. The moment you drop him out on the board, he's pretty much invulnerable. He's invisible. Uh, all the revite would do is give him the other qualities of his skill. Uh, and that's not really necessarily what you use him for. I think also a revive is one of the best, best talents, along with Scorch, uh, that are going to give him multiple lives and Scorch going to give him a, um, an ability to not take damage from a, an attack. Uh, Ronan, a great, great hero, an essential hero. Gunslinger, one of my absolute favorite heroes, uh, a hero that year upon year earns her place uh, of respect in Castle Clash. She's one of those great core heroes that I use on a, a near daily basis. Uh, Gunslinger has the highest DPS or attacks, successful hits, we should even call them because what does it matter if they don't actually hit? Uh, she can hit heroes faster than anybody in this game. And she can do so because she generates a whole bunch of little copters, helicopters that come out of her. And they each count as their own hero. So she's able to be multiple heroes in one. She's able to send these helicopters all the way around the board, killing off hero after hero. One of the true great queens of Here Be Monsters, one of those great, great heroes that will, I think, always have a place in a Here Be Monsters game mode, a hero trials, anywhere where you're defending your base. Also where you're looking for maximum DPS in combat with like uh, arch demons, uh, boss battles, uh, labyrinth stuff. Uh, as far as her talents go, I'm going to start at the other end because I think the majority of them are kind of old school. Uh, she would do well in Insignia form with something like a revive. She doesn't need a revite because she makes really, really fast energy. She doesn't need anything like that, anything to do with energy. She doesn't really need that. Uh, she would do very, very well with a flame guard. Excellent, excellent talent to use on her, base talent. Uh, she can do very well with a scatter. If you're looking for that kind of an effect, she would have one of the most dramatic effects because all her copters scatter the enemy. Um, a stone skin, fantastic. Keep her alive. Uh, tenacity, also being able to do that with the giant health pool. Uh, a bulwark, pretty good. Uh, I don't wouldn't push damage too much on her. I would go more towards survivability. Uh, an empower, definitely don't need it. 
She's able to do that on her own without that talent, talent or insignia. Uh, a sacred light, excellent, excellent. Extra health, extra damage reduction. Certain DPS game modes where you want super, super, super high DPS and you're going after that. Asunder uh, is a wonderful talent to have. Uh, matched up with like a brawler is one of the favorite talents. You could probably get away with a Vigorous Fury as well. But I only say that because it gives a health bonus as well. It's that health damage reduction that's going to add to her survivability. Something like survival as well. Uh, excellent. Probably better in Insignia form because the steps between levels in, in survival tend to be pretty low when you use it as a talent. Oh, let's go to our next man. Uh, we have ourselves uh, one of the greatest healers in the game. Walla Walla. Absolutely essential hero. Core hero. Every day I use this guy. We have other great heroes, uh, healers uh, as heroes in this game. And I'll mention those uh, pretty soon. But I go with Walla Walla more often than any other. Because Walla does not just the heal. He makes your whole team stronger. He also makes the other team weaker, takes away their ability to heal as well, uh, slows down their movement speed. He's a debuffer, as well as a buffer, as well as a damage dealer, as well as a very strong individual hero and a terrific healer. I think he's a, one of the core primary heroes in this game. Uh, I would run, as far as Walla Walla, I would look at him just like Anubis, primarily uh, a, a hero where you need to take advantage of his auto proc ability. I think one of the best uh, insignias to use on the guy would be an empower. Let him keep healing and buffing and debuffing while being a base defender. Uh, I think a really high dodge on him, blade dance. I would go as an insignia. I would go with wicked armor. Uh, he tends to put out a lot of damage against the, the enemy. And some of that can come back at him and hurt him. And even kill him. But Wicked Armor is going to prevent that. As well as give him a huge uh, attack increase. Uh, I typically run uh, Walla either with a Flame Guard talent. And Empower Insignia if he's on de defense. Uh, maybe a Sacred Light with an Empower Insignia. Uh, if I'm going to be doing head-to-head -head attacking and I want some extra damage and I don't want the reflect and deflect to hurt me, I might be doing Sacred Light or uh, Flame Guard, but then with Wicked Armor. So it's kind of these core talents on the guy. Um, go through some of these. I think Bulwark would be nice because it's a, a blend of the offensive and the defensive. Uh, I think a Stone Skin because it's just straight up damage reduction. And that's great. You just want to keep him alive as long as possible. Uh, instant skill activation with a revite. Really nice revive ability. I think he's a hero that does, is prone to getting killed. You got to bring him back. Uh, and revive has that capability. Especially as a talent. And then you use something else as the insignia. Because the higher the talent level goes, the, uh, the better the revive works. It's going to give you either more lives, depending on the talent level, or bring you back with more health from your original health pool. Go to our next hero. This is Creation 01. Creation 01 has an interesting uh, reputation in Castle Clash. Uh, there's a percentage of the population. It's like it falls into one of three categories. You've got category one of the CC population that thinks he's totally useless. <laughs> Category number two of the CC population uh, recognizes how useful it is and can't believe everybody else thinks he's useless. And then category number three, and this is why I'm making this video and mentioning creation, there will be free-to-play players who understand the importance of Creation 01 and prioritize him and raise him up to a level that's higher than their playing peers. And if you can do that, 
you will destroy all of your opponents. He can kill Zephyricus. He can kill Levanicus. He can kill Dovekeepers. And if you can take the time and effort and resources to allocate to this guy, uh, you are going to have an awesome base defense and a terrific uh, offensive capability. Uh, so an absolutely core hero. Uh, he is also like Walla Walla and Anubis, a hero that is auto proc. And I would put preferably as an insignia and power on the guy, especially in base defense. And he'll keep hitting anybody who comes in. Anybody who knocks on the front door, he's going to zap. And most will be killed. Uh, if you want to put some damage reduction on him, maybe some Sacred Light. Uh, I think also like Walla and, and uh, Anubis, you've got to get a little bit of Wicked Armor in there too. So if you're attacking with the guy, maybe some Sacred Light and a Wicked Armor. If you're defending and you want that auto proc ability, maybe a, a Wicked Armor. Uh, empower, empower, wicked armor combo. Uh, anything that's going to allow him the ability to mitigate reflect and deflect damage in this game. I find that one of the uh, other great talents for the guy is a flame guard. Uh, it's going to reduce damage, deflect damage. Anytime he gets hit, the person attacking him is going to take a piece of it. Uh, that paired up with an empower is one of my go-to setups for creation. Flame Guard, Empower, Insignia. Uh, I think he is one of the best in this game, especially with a refight. You want to take out two members of the team immediately that you're uh, facing in a, like a lost battlefield, right there. Uh, also a revive because he is prone to getting hurt. Keep him on a good team. Keep him surrounded by good heroes. Don't try to solo anybody with him. Treat him like a like a a tool that you want to last and that you put away right when you're done with your job. Okay, so he's there and ready when you pull him back out again. Um, let's move on. I have Sass here. Okay, you need somebody in this game who's able to be a tank, a wall, a shield up front. I mentioned a lot of specialists, buffers, debuffers, healers, uh, hero killers, surgeons. But you need somebody who can take the brunt of the attack. You need that wall up front. And Sass can do that. Uh, he's going to do tremendous damage. He's going to knock people around. He's going to freeze them up so they can't do anything, really. Uh, he has that capability. Uh, he is a hero where you can do a blend of attack as well as uh, defensive talents and insignias. I would, in today's game and the way we are going in the future in Castle Clash, I would lean more towards defensive. But if you have maybe a high dodge, you can do the blade dance. Figure his fury is okay too. Uh, a survival. I don't think I would use it as a talent. Use it more as an insignia but it can give him a really nice extra heal in addition to the one he already has. Sacred Light is a great core talent on the guy, and that doesn't seem to ever be changing. Uh, regen, it's really nice. It helps his heal, but at the same time, it doesn't give him damage reduction. I would probably run it more so as a, a, an insignia. Sacred Light with Regen, my gosh, the man would be a beast. Um, he does have an auto proc ability, but it's not nearly as useful as all the auto proc heroes that I've mentioned, especially. I would not go with the empower on him. Although that is an option, I would probably stay away from it. Flame Guard, excellent, especially for a tank up in front. I would necessarily go with a revite. There are better things to use him for. You don't want him to kind of, you know, blow off everything right away and be left with nothing. I would kind of give him more along the lines of the talents and insignias that I mentioned. I think that a revive would be great. I would much rather have that than a revite that goes off right away. A couple seconds later, just disappears. Uh, at least have him that backup that he can keep coming back. 
We move on to Dovekeeper. Okay, Dovekeeper is one of those heroes that, I, you know, you, you have to say without any uh, hesitation, top three. I don't think you could ever get into a fist fight with, with anybody in Castle Clash uh, if you said, hey, Dovekeeper's top three. And they might be, it might be number one for them, might be number two. But they'll say at least day three. Okay, sure, buddy. Uh, Dovekeeper is one of those hero killers. She has a permanent damage cap. That makes her one of the true survivalists in this game. There are multiple ways to run Dovekeeper. Okay, see my multiple independent Dovekeeper videos. I would go one of two ways on her. I would go either the way of dealing hero damage, where you're trying to kill off heroes, or I would go the way of doing base damage. Where you're trying to stay along live, uh, stay alive long enough to let a hair force one, a doom balloon, some kind of base damaging pet, whatever we may have available to us, let that base damage accumulate. So it's either base damage or hero damage. Uh, I don't know if there is uh, necessarily an in between that I would go for. I would go for one or the other. Make her a specialist at one or the other, and you won't regret it later. Uh, as far as base damage is concerned, Blade Dance. If you can put her dodge up, she'll never die. Vigorous Fury, it's nearly the same. A Life Drain, maybe not quite as good because she has to constantly be attacking and making contact and doing that attack process. And that tends to uh, limit the Life Drain's effect I think stealth is one of those uh, great talents, too. Uh, it's typically a talent that you run on a dove that you want to keep alive and continually, continuously do, you know, prolonged, sustained base damage. I think it's a talent that almost at any level has a real impact because it's not, it will always put you into that stealthy elusive, regardless of what level you have. And that's a real benefit to this talent. It's one of the few th talents that does that. Um, she will then heal up if you give her a, uh, a survival insignia or you want to run it the other way around. These two are paired very, very often. And you're going to have a dove that with a doom balloon going to 100% a base in you know, two minutes uh, and do so alone. You just solo it. Um, really high DPS is, is gotten with uh, something like a Sunder. Uh, it's very niche, but it certainly is an option. Uh, you've got the ability to do tremendous hero damage if you're out for hero killing with your dove. Then you might want to run an accuracy setup in terms of traits, and you might want to pair it up with like a, a holy pack to get tremendous attack damage. Uh, something like a, uh, a brute force and a vigorous fury for hero killing. Great critical and critical damage. She can do that too. She's a real specialist in these things. Um, she is prone to stun. So if you have, and just like stealth, it does work at any level. If you have a little bit of uh, iron will uh, in any level as an insignia, throw it on her. And it helps her to get going, get that train uh, moving in the uh, dungeons when there's so many stun towers around. Uh, empower something I would probably stay away from uh, outside of maybe here be monsters. And hero trials. In other game modes in Castle Clash, it can tend to get you timed out, tend to get your heroes in the, hung up on the bad guys. Uh, against human attackers, it can tend to put out really weak love doves that aren't strong enough to necessarily kill the bad guys that are attacking your base, but it allows the bad guys to generate their energy and get their skills going and hurt all the guys who are on your base. So it's something that really has a negative impact in a lot of game modes. I would be very careful about what game mode you choose to use uh, Empower in on uh, Dove. Uh, Life Drain that I mentioned earlier, uh, Tenacity is great. Uh, get her health pull up. The more you can do that, the better she's going to survive. Um, a flame guard is going to give her a deflect capability, but also lower her damage cap. So if she's taking 18,000, uh, flame guard will take it down. Uh, 
here at level five by uh, 20 percent uh, and every time that she gets hit she's taking less damage and it effectively makes her a better strong uh, more survival prone hero gives her a longer life uh, that pairs up and stacks with uh, victory lunge the enchantment and whatever deflect you're getting from flame guard will add to the deflect uh, that you are getting uh, from victory lunge so those two work in combination one with one another um, you could use a revive and i think it would have its utility i would probably use it more so as an insignia uh, she's not uh somebody who you need a revite with uh, she can do so much better with so many other talents and insignias uh, a true game changer uh, was dove and still continues to be dove you will never regret uh, upgrading your dove keeper taking a look at Ashura. Ashura, just like Sass, is one of those tremendous walls in the game. A great tank up in front. Uh, when you're using these specialized heroes, it is often best to get the attention of the enemy and to direct it on somebody who has a very, very high survivability and who isn't necessarily your number one attacker. That might be Dove. You might want to drop her second. Somebody like an Ashura is going to deflect a lot of damage. Really, really hurt the enemy. Do a tremendous amount of damage against multiple heroes. Lower their energy. And uh, this is going to continue during the entire battle. So the moment he's out there, he's going to be having that lowering of energy effect uh, that continuously happens over time. He's a hero that is a great supporter while at the same time being a great wall. He's a foundationary hero. Um, as far as talents go, he does very, very well with Vigorous Fury. I think at uh, really any level that you have him in his upgrading process, he really does benefit from the extra health and the ability to do more damage through critical strikes. Um, a survival can be very helpful to him. Heal, which is something he lacks, invulnerability, Yes, it will take away from his deflect during those moments that he's invulnerable. But I say in today's game to give him that opportunity to heal up and to continue to fight in the battle. I think it's worth a trade off of a few seconds of deflection. Um, speaking of, I think there's great utility as well in something like a sacred light uh, or even a stone skin. Damage reduction, although it will lower his deflect capability at least gives you the option to keep him alive through a lengthy battle either offensively or defensively and to use him in a variety of game modes uh, he's not going to take the classic one shot if he's got some damage reduction uh, in addition to what he has naturally through his deflect i think it's a, a wise decision because a dead Ashura helps no one um, you could do a uh, brute force when you're running the vigorous fury um, a bulwark would be excellent he is an attacker but he also truly benefits as a deflector from higher health pool uh, a tenacity speaking of health pool that'd be great I would stay away from uh, flame guard uh, based on the fact that he already does um, the majority of that, meaning through all these steps and processes of the upgrading process, each one of these tiers and steps, uh, he's already doing that with his skill. And it would be a lost use of a skill or insignia. So many other options that would do so much better for the man, like a revite, something in a lost battlefield, anywhere there's a small distance or a small board where he's going to meet the enemy right away. This, and he's immediately going to be hitting multiple heroes in front of them and removing their ability to create energy and activate their skill uh, and revive to keep him coming back. Uh, he is a really, really great hero um, and a hero that does a lot of different things, yes, but a hero that can always be that front 
line. Put them up front, front line of your lost battlefield team, and you won't regret it. I move on to Mahatma. Mahatma is a hero that you need, that I deem to be essential, especially for a free-to-play player. You have to have a hero that does what Mahatma does. Mahatma attacks at a tremendous rate of speed, but also has the ability to really do maximum impact damage. That's something that Gunslinger can't necessarily do. She can rack up the hits, but she can't do the max wipeout damage that Mahatma can do. Mahatma can do this to really any hero in the game, even damage capped heroes like a Dove Keeper, because she is able to hit so often. So you will see Dove taking that her damage cap of damage again and again and again because of the amazing attack speed that Mahatma brings to the table. Uh, also, her built-in damage reduction helps to make her a survivalist. She's a blend of both. Great, great hero to use in so many multiple game modes. Her long distance attack, you can even put her in the back of your lost battlefield team and she'll still hit super quick, if not right away, because they're within her range. Uh, so she's a great hero to uh, to pair up with a number of talents. She's kind of like a like an amazing shotgun, okay, that you can load with all of this different kind of ammunition that we see in front of us. Uh, a Vigorous Fury. Give her critical ability. Uh, there are times where she is prone to reflect damage and deflect damage. Use Wicked Armor as an insignia. Uh, if you want to get her DPS up, the Favors Talents, Asunder, really terrific. A survival for more of that defensive build, ability to heal. A little bit of invulnerability. She'll keep firing away while she's healing and not taking damage. Uh, truly one of the talents and should be used as a talent that was destined for Mahatma, that was practically tailor suited to Mahatma, is a zealous drive. Increase her attack, and reduce her damage. That's what she does. And also gift her with even greater range than she already has. It's kind of like Mahatma got a uh, a big boost, okay, uh, to whatever she does naturally. It's a great, great talent to use. You can get away with the Unholy Pact. You're going to be taking some damage uh, in return, but uh, you're really going to get some heavy, heavy attack against the enemy. Uh, I think you would do well with some damage reduction talents, things like a Sacred Light, things like a Flame Guard, like a Stone Skin, uh, she already has that built in and these things don't add or stack but through an equation they have a, an effect a, a, a domino effect as you move down the line and eventually you come out with a hero that takes very very little damage and each layer of damage reduction aids in that um, the brute force paired up with the vigorous fury you've got a hero killer boom just like that you want to make a, a dove killer, you do the Vigorous Fury, and you take the uh, Saint's Favor talent, the Saint's Favor insignia. And now, uh, excuse me, take the Oracle's Favor uh, insignia, and now pair it up with the um, Vigorous Fury talent. And you've got a hero like Mahatma who can continuously fire, rapid fire, do critical damage, do her basic attack damage and gear it specifically to hurting heroes that are of the white saint faction. And that's the warden faction in the game and Dove is a member of that. I've been running that kind of a setup for a long time, ever since these talents came out. And it's great for killing off Dove Keepers. So take them out very, very quickly. Uh, and you can do it different, different ways. Um, Problem with the Levanicas, put her Brawler's Insignia. Uh, got a problem with Zephyricas, this will help you. Uh, that and a, a Vigorous, really great for a Mahatma. Uh, problem with pretty much any of those guys like Ripper, Phobos, Anubis, the rest of the gang. Walla Walla, they all fall under Brawler faction. 
So you can really load her up with different ammo, depending on the situation. She's an extremely um, versatile hero in that sense. Um, we have a stone skin. I think it wouldn't be as good as a sacred lake because it doesn't do the health bonus, but it will aid her in staying alive. Uh, Flame Guard, which I may have mentioned earlier, uh, she has very, very fast, high energy production. You don't need a uh, an empower, and you don't need a, a revitalize. She'll pretty much just fire off right away, like first shot. Kind of like in a, approximately kind of like a Phantom King in that sense. Like she's going to fire it right uh, immediately at the start of battle. And a uh, revive will give her the chance to come back. Uh, even if the enemy took her out, she'll come back. They'll have targeted some other hero on your team. And she'll be able to hit him and, you know, hopefully take out that team, give you a second chance. Uh, let's move on. We have Commodore. Okay, you need a base smasher. You need a dungeon smasher. You need somebody with the brute strength to do that. And Commodore is that hero. Uh, she is a kind of like a Minotaur chieftain in that sense. And if you run her right, and you use her, not on a suicide mission, okay? But if you use her uh, strategically, uh, she can do 75%, even 100% base damage. She can help you dramatically in those stages of dungeon progress that you're still struggling with. And she can get you up over the edge and turn towards your flame accumulation and pro a general progress in this game. Uh, as far as talents are concerned, and check my Commodore video and I'll explain this in more detail. She deflects damage kind of like Michael, but like what I said with Michael, I think is even more so with Commodore. Don't be afraid of damage reduction. Damage reduction is going to lower the deflect capability of heroes, but a dead hero deflects nothing. A hero that can't last for more than 30 seconds is really of no general use and utility in this game. If you give her, give her like a, a sacred light or a stone skin or even a bulwark or a tenacity uh, or even a vital boon, but then paired up in insignia form with something that provides damage reduction like sacred light and a stone skin, I think that it would make a much better Commodora and she's not going to get killed immediately. She's going to be able to hang in there. She will be a primary target when you use her in this game. Uh, heroes will go after her because she is smashing all around the board. Uh, and she can tend to get taken out pretty quickly. So I think that something like uh, uh, Sacred Light is one of her primary, primary talents. In Insignias, I would probably run something like a Vigorous Fury. I would probably run a... Uh, Survival is an excellent pairing up with uh, Sacred Light. Those two really kind of go hand in hand. Damage reduction, extra health, healing, and vulnerability. It's this whole process and cycle that really, really aids in our hero's uh, ability to defend themselves. Um, if you go as far as Unholy Pact, keep in mind that she's going to be taking more damage. Uh, that can be good or bad depending on the game mode. It's something that I would probably keep in Insignia form and use it kind of like a special tool every once in a while. It doesn't have to be something that's a core talent. Um, a bulwark would be great. Again, it got that blend of attack and, and uh, defense. Uh, a stone skin, excellent. Uh, she's got a built-in deflect, so I would probably stay away from flame guard uh, like Ashura. It's gonna cancel out at the majority of levels. Uh, there are many things kind of like Anubis in a sense many things to put on her that are better than a revite revite gun and she's smashing somebody yeah that can have its use in a certain sense but there's so much better stuff to put on her again like a revive I'd rather have a two lives three lives on a Commodora than uh, an instant skill activation uh, let's move on to our next guy this is Laz okay Laz I was always surprised that Laz wasn't one of the 
premier event dragons. All this guy is lacking is a healing process. And if they would have released them as this year's uh, event dragon, I would have said, this is a great hero. Uh, this is a hero that excels and that moves above his station as a gem rolling hero. I do that in air quotes. And this is a premier hero in, in Castle Clash and could be used in so many game modes and so many different ways. Offensive, defensive, something as varied as a Here Be Monsters, all the way to like a Lost Battlefield or even Arena. Uh, advanced stages of dungeons, uh, a massive impact on the game. Blow everything up, freeze everybody up, do damage, do pulsating damage over time gain in vulnerability, uh, a, a hero that does a lot very, very well. And, um, you know, it's a real, real top tier hero. Um, as far as talents go, I really think that the Sacred Light and Survival pairing, either way you, you can run it, is a superior build if you are looking for your Laz to remain alive and fight a lengthy battle. Okay, it's how I've always run Laz because it allows him to stay in the battle for a full three minutes or defend your base for the two minutes that people are attacking you. Uh, there are many game modes that benefit from a revive Laz or a revitalize Laz or a combination of those two. And I'm not putting that down. Uh, I, I do that too, okay? I, I, I have a skin so I can do both. But I would go with a Sacred Light Survival. And if you can get a Revive Insignia, put that as your Insignia, okay? Give him an extra life or two uh, and give him damage reduction. Because while he is invulnerable, that goes away. And during that time, he can be killed very, very quickly. Uh, so the... I think the number one would probably be the Sacred Light and Survival. The Survival is going to give him that death, that healing that I mentioned that kept him from being like that premier event dragon. That's the healing process he needed. That was the last, you know, nail in the, in the last coffin. And that really does allow him to stay alive. Uh, you can run him with damage dealing talents. Yes, you can. Uh, I would not make that my primary choice. Uh, I would go more towards like a hybrid if you're going to go that way. Something like a Zealous Drive is excellent because it gives you both the damage reduction and the attack. Uh, something like a, a Bulwark, really nice. Uh, something like a, uh, I mean, even a Flame Guard. During his invulnerability time, he's not taking damage. But during the time that that shield drops, he can take a tremendous amount of damage from all the heroes that are beating on him, waiting for the shield to drop. Okay, so as soon as that goes away and the freeze stops, he can be hit by, by five, six heroes. Flame Guard's gonna mitigate that and also send a lot of it back at the attacker. Uh, the Revite, like I mentioned, paired up with the Revive, uh, really, really nice. Uh, these are the, the talents and insignias that I would really go for in terms of uh, Laz. Uh, I don't think he's somebody that can be run with a whole spectrum. I think he does best with those core talents and insignias. Cosmo. Okay, Cosmo is the guy that does the, the freeze ability. Here it's paralysis. He shuts down the hero and he does it better than Laz. He does not have the survivability of Laz. But if you are looking to shut down the enemy team and to shut down certain bosses and archdemons in this game, Cosmo is your man. If you're looking to put somebody on your base to defend, and he is auto proc, to defend and just encapsulate the attackers in a paralyzing bubble of doom, Cos is your man. He will continue to do that and until such a specific hero like this is created, Kaz will always fill that role. He is an essential hero in this game and will continue to be an essential hero, like the ones that we're looking at on this list. 
as far as talents go, like Anubis, Walla, uh, like um, uh, Creation, uh, like uh, now Cosmo, that Empower allows him to auto-generate his skill as a base defender and immediately attack anybody who comes in from the edges. Uh, that Empower is going to allow him in multiple game modes to really, really shut down the enemy. Um, I find that Wicked Armor is a near essential for the man. If you're going to, to the point where I might even run Empower as a talent for its ability to give him extra health and, but more importantly, the auto proc. But without Wicked Armor, uh, he can kill, he can get killed from the damage that he causes others. He is extremely prone to reflect and deflect damage. The Wicked Armor acts like a an offensive sacred light. It will provide not damage reduction, but the lowering of possible damage and do so in a way that will specifically help Cosmo. And it's almost like in a way that Wicked Armor had Cosmo in mind when it was uh, uh, created. Um, we have certainly a survival. It wouldn't be my first choice, but it would have utility and purpose on the guy. Sacred Light, another real popular talent or insignia to run with him. A Sacred Light and Empower, wonderful. Uh, you've got the damage reduction. You've got uh, the auto proc ability. Uh, a Flame Guard would be great uh, for all the reasons that I've mentioned with the, the different Flame Guard heroes. Uh, many of the auto proc heroes, uh, like Walla, if I hadn't mentioned him as well, uh, many of the auto proc heroes really serve a great purpose with Flame Guard because they're the ones that are typically in a defensive uh, posture in this game. And they're going to get hit. Well, they'll deflect some of it. And at that exact second, also then their auto proc goes off and it really starts to shut down the enemy. It's a, it's a real barrage against attackers. Uh, the automatic instant skill activation from Revitalize is invaluable. This is the way to run cause in anything like a arena or a, a lost battlefield, any short battle, the short board, shorter timer. This is the way to go. Boom, whole team's wrapped up in a giant bubble. The rest of your team swoops in and starts killing off the heroes. And, you know, he's a, a hero that you have to take good care of. Uh, a revive can be very helpful in a variety of game modes, <clears throat> but also in addition, as a defender and an attacker, the ability to come back, and just like with a Mahatma, the enemy will target another hero. And when he revives, Cosmo will be able to swoop in there and to do his thing and get another bubble, another two activated, allowing your team to hopefully get the upper hand. We go to Ripper. Okay, Ripper is a great base defender. I would probably put Ripper up there with the top base defenders in this game. Ripper silences the enemy. He takes away their ability to use their skill. Without their skill, they're just a bunch of clowns walking around with a bag of candy. Okay, so with Ripper, you can stop that. Like Wawa, Anubis, Creation, Cosmo, uh, all of these great auto proc heroes. Empower on this guy in a base defense scenario is going to allow him to do that. Enemy comes in. Oh, they get hit with a ripper proc. Well, all of a sudden, their skill goes away. Only way to stop that is to be immune to silence. Uh, as far as uh, talents go, the auto proc with empower, an absolutely essential. I think an insignia form would be better. A revive, a revite, instantly take away the skill ability of the enemy. Any kind of short game mode, short travel distance. Uh, a, a flame guard, excellent. Again, auto proc and flame guard uh, often go very, very well with one another. Uh, and that use of empower allowing the auto proc and to keep them alive. Um, 
I think a Sacred Light is a very, very popular talent and with good cause and good reason. It is a general way to keep him alive. He is a hero that can be prone to getting killed because he's such a specialist. Uh, keep him on a good team. Give him some damage reduction. I think Wicked Armor, absolutely essential. The damage that he does is so brutal that even a portion of it coming back at him is enough to kill him. So uh, we tend to, uh, throughout this list, on our auto proc heroes on base and our great defenders, we're kind of going through a, a spectrum of talents and insignias that rely upon empower for the auto proc that often provide damage reduction through maybe a sacred light, that often provide the mitigation of damage through deflect and reflect with a wicked armor. Often through talent, we might be running a flame guard to put some deflect back and to mitigate damage of our own. And these talents and insignias come together and create this really nice blend. And it's not this you know, 40 talent long spectrum of talents you have to choose from. It's just within this little family. And these are the ones that you go with and that I go with on a daily basis. And I don't see them being replaced. I see them growing as our heroes grow. Uh, so again, essential pairings. Uh, let's continue on the essential list, especially for the free to play. Uh, let's continue on. Here we go. Occultist. Uh, a while back, I was talking about Walla, and I said that there were some great healers in this game, and I, I'll get to them. Okay, well, this is the one I'm getting to. So on this list of 18, plus a bonus of Pumpkin Duke, I'm going to throw in Occultist as our second uh, core hero, uh, healer in this game. Uh, just like Walla, he is going to provide a heal. He does it in a different way. Instead of healing whatever damage you took, he allows the damage that you're taking to become healing. So he's able to make that transmutation from damage into a healing process. It's really quite amazing. Uh, he is an auto proc hero. Uh, he is a hero that is suited for base defense and power. Um, in terms of his uh, damage dealing capability, if you're running an auto proc with Empower, I wouldn't go and put the, the uh, Wicked Armor on him. Unlike all the other ones that I've mentioned, he doesn't really do enough damage against the enemy to make Wicked Armor useful. He throws one little dagger every once in a while. He's not probably gonna get killed by reflect or deflect damage. So if you run in, in power, I would probably run it up with a Sacred Light. Uh, and you'll get a much, much healthier, uh, vigorous um, occultist. And speaking of, a uh, Vigorous Fury would also help him if you want a more offensive occultist and using more of an attack scenario. He's very good. We like that too. Put him in your team. Drop him all on the enemy heroes. He turns damage into healing. Uh, helps your entire team to survive. A survival would help with his ability to heal, to negate damage. If you're running the vigorous route, I wouldn't go so far as to be pairing it up with a, uh, a brute force. I don't see him as an attacker in that sense. He's more a support hero. So vigorous and maybe a sacred light for an attack scenario be a wonderful pairing. Many different ways to go with this. I'm not saying this is a... There are multiple shades of gray, okay? And I can only say so many talents and insignias. Uh, I think a flame guard, excellent. Again, that's that short list of talents and insignias for heroes that auto proc and that are utility based and that are used in defense. You keep going back to Flame Guard. Well, this is another example. And it does a great job with Occultist. Uh, instant skill activation with the Revite. 
I think there were better things, but you know, I, there are, there could be possibilities, and I would use it really in any form uh, or it, at any level as only an insignia. Uh, I'd rather give him damage reduction uh, and a revive, excellent for a healer and a utility hero like this, uh, or put a reviver on your team like Tree that I mentioned. Oh, we look at uh, Phobos here. Phobos is another one of those essential heroes, especially for a free-to-play player. Uh, you want a hero that's going to have utility for you in the future and that will grow alongside Castle Clash. Uh, Phobos is one of those heroes. In many ways, he's kind of like a brother to Ripper. He provides a silence and takes away the skill ability of the enemy. Uh, he is an auto proc hero with the empower and can keep generating his abilities. Uh, he takes uh, away um, energy of the enemy. Uh, he is an incredible base defender and survivalist because he also deflects uh, a substantial portion of the damage that he takes and sends it back at the attacker. Uh, that damage is also negated from his uh, health loss. So a really, really uh, amazing hero that has uh, many, many uses in uh, Castle Clashes, many varied uh, game modes. Uh, you can run him with, um, uh, I think he's one of the few heroes, uh, my personal opinion, that's really good with the, the, new, the new talent, the silent cover. It is an option. Uh, this only provides damage reduction now. I'm not like a sacred light. But it really does a nice job on uh, somebody like uh, Phobos, who already has uh, like a built-in deflect. Um, you know, it's going to make him a, a tankier hero and uh, help to silence uh, the enemy, especially those right up in front of him that he's attacking. Uh, if you run a really high dodge, Blade Dance can be great. Vigorous can be fantastic. Uh, and I'd probably run it as a talent. Um, he does take... Uh, reflect and deflect damage in this game like so many of our auto proc heroes that we've mentioned um, really occultist being about the only exception because he doesn't do a lot of damage uh, but Phobos can and it can kill him so I would put uh, a wicked armor on there uh, somewhere if you're going to be doing a, a base defense um, survival can be nice uh, it's going to give him a heal uh, it's going to give him a little bit of uh, total zeroing out of damage um again the empower as i mentioned uh probably with a you know like a wicked armor insignia or maybe a, a, a sacred light with a, a an empower uh, it'd be really nice uh, up his damage reduction uh, i'd probably stay away from flame guard because like ashura you know he's got built-in deflect and most levels of flame guard are going to be pretty much overridden, canceled out by the uh, the inherent deflect that he already has as a part of his uh, hero ability. Uh, you can get the instant skill activation just like uh, Ripper, and boom, enemy team is silenced. Okay, uh, and I would use that only specifically for for something like a lost battlefield scenario or something like that. Um, Anywhere you gotta fight longer than a couple seconds, it, it, he's already used up his talent or insignia when you go with the revite route. Uh, and ability to come back, uh, always great. Uh, we're gonna go to our, and it will be our 19th hero, because we did the list to 18. 18 most essential Castle Clash heroes, especially geared towards free to play who need to maximize resource expenditure and prioritize hero upgrading. Uh, this is 18 plus our bonus of Pumpkin Duke brings us to a total of 19 once we add. And it was tough with, uh, you know, more heroes in the compendium, but as I whittled down this list, I thought what is truly essential and what will, I think, just as importantly, not just today, but will continue to be essential in this game. And where we're not going to regret the upgrades later. Uh, I would go of the remaining heroes in our compendium, most certainly I would go with Queen Wasp. And the reason is this. We have built some really awesome teams 
with offers, debuffers, healers, specialists, generalists, tanks, walls, shields, hero killers. But what we don't have is what Queen Wasp can do. So not only is she a great hero in terms of damage and survivability, she will give our teams the ability to hit the enemy. It will increase our accuracy. And uh, everywhere from boss five uh, to all the future game modes, accuracy will be a benefit to us. Uh, too low an accuracy rate and we're not going to be able to hit the enemy. She will provide that. She is also the kind of hero that can not only spread that to your teammates surrounding her, but do so in an auto proc format as a base defender. Uh, she will also, and this is another thing that we're lacking on the team. We don't have anybody who is going to increase the damage that the enemy can take, not in the way that Queen Wasp can do it. There are heroes like Siren and heroes like Beast Tamer who do this as well. But those heroes have almost zero use outside of one or two extremely specific game modes. They're not what I would call essential heroes for a general player who wants to build a really strong team. So Queen Wasp is going to make the enemy take more damage. And if you're not hitting the damage cap or upper threshold of damage on certain heroes and bosses in this game, you can so with a Queen Wasp at your side there on the team. Her immunity to silence and her built-in damage reduction does a great job at making her all around a really, really strong hero. Uh, I think Vigorous is going to be great. She is susceptible to something like uh, Reflect and Deflect. Keep in mind a Wicked Armor. Uh, couldn't go wrong with the survival. I couldn't uh, complain about healing and uh, invulnerability. Uh, give her damage reduction in addition to what she already has. Something like a uh, Zealous Drive is great. A Sacred Light, fantastic. Um, Due to her auto proc ability, I would absolutely prioritize Empower. Really, in any form, is going to help her. And uh, in, at any level, it's really going to help her uh, to auto proc and activate her skill. Uh, probably a, a Flame Guard, like so many of our other auto proc heal healers and supporters that we want to provide longevity to but also the ability to deal with heroes that are right up in their face attacking. Um, instant skill activation, sure, with the Revite, uh, probably at that point with so many talents and insignias to choose from, I find myself choosing Revite less and less these days in Castle Clash. It's not like when it began, but you know, a Revive, I would take over a Revite any day. Uh, a video like this and many others like it on YouTube uh, is a good source, a resource, one of the many to click on and to go back to and say, you know what, I forgot about a cultist or, you know, I, I forgot about creation and I'm at, you know, 200,000 might and I'm going to be the person with a breakthrough 10 creation and I'm going to absolutely go nuclear on every one of my opponents. That That's who this video is for. So that was our list of the uh, Evil 18, the 18 most essential heroes in Castle Clash uh, provided on a free-to-play basis all through Gem Rolling. So we know what to do and know who to do it with. This is the essence of Castle Clash. It's that choice and selection process where we spend our time and effort and energy. Uh, I hope the game is treating you well. Uh, it's a great game, a great community, and it's a pleasure and honor to be a part of it. Uh, thanks, everybody, and happy Clash. Bye-bye.